How thankful are you? It's the title of the message, and uh, as we start this new, uh, for the next couple Sundays, dealing with Thanksgiving and thanks living and uh, being thankful, because this is the season of thankfulness. But why is it that most people we meet appear to be miserable? When was the last time you actually saw somebody and you said, oh, that's a miserable person. I don't want to get around that person. I mean, there are a lot of miserable people in our generation, especially in these days. You go and you see them and they're just so sad and so upset about everything. There's just that, that they're just so miserable. And I want to say this, granted, <clears throat> things in life don't always work out the way you and I want them to. Is that correct? That is a true statement. We have our wants, we have our desires of how things should work out, but typically they don't work out the way that we have made the plans. And if they don't work out, that shouldn't cause us, should not cause you, should not cause other individuals to live a life of misery. Who are we to dictate how things are going to happen? We are not capable of controlling anything in our future. And so when we begin to realize and we understand that often a miserable person feels that there is nothing to be thankful for, so they go around not only making themselves more miserable, but making others around them extremely miserable as well. I mean, I'll be, let's face it, I'll be one to tell you, uh, if I'm around a miserable person, I'm looking for the exit. You know, like, uh, excuse me, you gotta go. That type, because being around a miserable person is a miserable thing. They are establishing and they're beginning to do things that just draw us away from what we need to be doing. We need to take life and begin to uh, cherish the life. And only when people stop, when individuals, when people stop looking at what they don't have, because that's where misery comes in. I don't have good health, so I'm going to be miserable the rest of my life. Well, let me say something. You're going to be miserable the rest of your life because your health will deteriorate. That's just something about age. And so when they begin to look at the things that they don't have, they fail to be thankful for the things that they do have. People, listen to me. Every one of us here today, we have something to be thankful for. Amen? I don't care how bad it gets in your life, there is something that you should be thanking God for. And uh, you know, th this is where we began to relate and understand that uh, it is a matter of choice whether you're gonna to choose to be miserable or to be, be thankful for what God is doing. And will their view on life change when they start looking at that God is in control? Now we are a generation of individuals that have so much to be thankful for. And God's word encourages us this way. It basically says to us that we are to give thanks in all things, not some things. People, it's easy to be thankful if you get a promotion. It's easy to be thankful if you are able to, you know, get what you're asking for. So this aspect of being thankful is conditional based upon a lot of our own inklings. And what we need to realize is you and I need to go to the process of moving beyond and understand that we are to be thankful in all things. That's hard. So how thankful are you? That's what I want you to begin to understand. And I want you to gauge yourself. Are you thankful? Are you fulfilling what Scripture says? Well, let's look at what God's Word has to say in regards to what we are to be thankful for. Now, I want you to turn in your Bibles to uh, 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, right at the end of 1 Thessalonians, the last couple of verses, uh, Paul begins to throw out some very important truths. This is what he begins to establish. This is what he begins to say to us. 
in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, he says, in everything, not some things, not a few things, but in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So what Paul is writing and what Paul is saying here, the scripture is establishing that we are to give thanks in all things and that this is the will of God. And I'm here to tell you that many in church, churches, many in the world that we live in today are not fulfilling what this passage says. We have a generation of individuals who are unthankful. So why aren't people thankful? I think that's a good way that we can begin looking at and, and seeing the message today. Why aren't people thankful? Why aren't you thankful? Maybe you're thankful for a few things, but as we go through this, you'll begin to see that this is a, a condition of what has been programmed into our minds often. And so what we need to do is realize that what many are doing is not fulfilling the passage. We are individuals who choose what we will be thankful for or what we will not be thankful for. So why aren't people thankful? The first thing that I want us to realize is when a person is unthankful, it is typically because of this. They are upset with their life. Now people listen to me because they're going through life and they see people who are rejoicing and they see people who are happy and that makes them more miserable. And the reason it's making them more miserable because they're comparing their life, what's going on in their life, and they're looking at somebody else and they see that that person is not as miserable as them. So what you have is you have individuals who are upset with their life. So a miserable person looks at themselves and said, well, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have that. I want this, it never got to me and I'm just upset that this didn't happen the way I want it to happen. And so they're looking at their life in what is happening and they began to mull it over and when you start mulling over some of the problems in your life, you're going to get more miserable. So this is where you begin to say, well, I have nothing in my life. Look at the catastrophe. Look at the way things are going. Look at my children. Look at my parents. And they just, it just goes on and on. And they begin to establish that they are looking at their life and there's nothing that they can really see good. They complain more than they rejoice. Let me stop with that statement. They complain more than they rejoice. Now let me ask, what is your complain factor versus your rejoice factor? Which one outweighs the other? Are you complaining more than rejoicing? Then you need to somehow change it to where you get this concept of, I am going to rejoice in all things. Isn't that what the scripture says? That we are to rejoice in all things. But here's another, number two, the area, why aren't people thankful? And Justin alluded to it in the area of, of the 10 individuals who were healed of leprosy. And they, they was healed of leprosy and what typically happens and why people sometimes just stay in misery is because secondly, we are too busy. Okay, we, we get too busy, too preoccupied. Why, I mean, didn't Jesus tell those uh, 10 individuals, he says, basically, you're healed, go and, 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 and go to the priest and take care of what is written in the law, go and do that. So their mindset was, we're going to go, and as they are going, they're healed, and only one of them says, hey, I'm not too busy to go back to Jesus. I can, I can delay going to the priest, but to Jesus who has changed my life, I am going to take and go back and be thankful. And we find that he goes back and he, he thanks Jesus for what Jesus did. And Jesus says, weren't all 10 healed? Well, Jesus knew. But yet, the others were too busy. And we can get so busy in the projects of things that are religious and good-minded, but yet we forget that who, who we ought to really be thanking God for or thanking, giving thanks to. No time. Well, do you understand 
You control your time. Well, no, I know. I get this call and that call. And... Well, people, listen. There's times you need to step back and to say, thank you, God. Well, let's go to number three. Why aren't people thankful? We look into the generation and the culture in which we live today. We, we have a mindset, and it has been in my lifetime, this mindset of individuals. They're not thankful because they feel things are owed them. Amen? Ain't that right? I don't need to work for it. I'm owed it, and I expect everybody else. So if, if, if I expect it and I'm owed it, then I will not thank somebody for what I receive. And so this is the area of what we get. And I, I even jotted this down. When you take a job with your employer, with your boss, I want to ask this question. Have you ever gone back to your boss and said, boss, thank you for my paycheck. You ought to. We ought to be doing that because, well, many people don't do it. Well, I, I mean, you know, wait a minute now. I'm looking at my paycheck and, and I deserve more than what the boss gave me. Well, did you not agree to work for that? And you ought to be thanking your boss that you have a job. Because you could lose your job and they could close up their businesses and you can be without. So let's start realizing that we're not owed anything. And if we're not owed anything, then everything that comes to us we turn around and we start to thank the individual, the giver, and we're going to get to that in just a moment. But this gets us uh, past number three, where they feel things are owed them. Number four is they feel there is nothing, nothing in their life to be thankful for. And they look at their life and their children, well, they don't resemble the mother, they resemble the father and all the bad characters. You know what I'm talking about. You acting like your daddy or you're acting like your mom. And so we look at this concept to where we start picking all the things that we are not thankful for. And we feel that and it just it, it overwhelms us. And, and we feel that there is nothing in this world to be thankful for. Well, let me put it to you this way. The next time you feel there is nothing to be thankful for and you choose to be miserable, stop and thank God that you have the freedom to feel miserable. You ever thought about that? You ought to thank God. God, I thank you that I'm allowed to feel miserable. God, I'm a, I thank you that I'm allowed to feel pain. God, I thank you that I struggle with my child, with my daughter. God, I thank you for all these things because that is the fulfillment of what Paul is teaching us in 1 Thessalonians, that we are to give thanks in all things, not just a few. And admittedly so, sometimes it is difficult to give thanks for all things. But I guarantee that every one of us can find something to be thankful for. So what do we? What do you, you and I, what do we have to be thankful for? Let me give you a couple things very uh, quickly in regards to the things that you and I need to be thankful for. And the first one, obviously, is the thing that you ought to be thankful for is life, our life. You have life. And so in this concept of the life that you have, you need to stop and say, thank you, Lord, that you made me. And thank you, let me put it to you this way. Thank you, Lord, that you did not make me like everybody else. That's a good thing. We're all different, uniquely different. God made some people left-handed and some people right-handed, or that could be because of their upbringing. It matters not, but you get to embrace the differences in your life. God give talent to some individuals who are different talents than other individuals, and all talents are needed by God. So you need to stop and be thankful for your life. I thought it was ironic sharing with the family in regards to my mother 
And some of you who are there know what I'm about to say, or you'll figure out in just a moment that here my mother, uh, whom we loved and accepted, and we thought that, you know, the, the day that she married dad, that was one of the greatest uh, things in the world, which it was, because if she had not married my dad, I would not be here. And if I would not be here, then I will say that Justin would not be here and the other children that we have. And I shared and I asked my sister afterwards and my brother, because I told them ahead of time I was going to tell something on mom that they probably didn't know. They wanted me to tell them ahead of time I wouldn't do it. So it was sprung on them at the same time. And that was the fact that my mother had been engaged three times to be married. She kept that secret for years, but when she was uh, just probably a few months back, she disclosed that when Sandy came across that picture I mentioned in uh, one of the albums up there. Who is this, grandmother? Well, that's one of the boys I was engaged to. And so, but this is the thing that we begin to look at is, is life itself. I thank God that I was born with having parents my mom, my dad, because if it wasn't them, I probably, like I say, would not be. So listen, your life is precious. And you need to be thanking God that you still have life because in an instant, God can take it from you. You're not guaranteed a tomorrow. Your clock is ticking down and it will stop. And so when you look at the things to be thankful for, our life, and secondly, goes along with your life, you need to be thankful for your family and friends. Now, I lump those together, family and friends, because I feel that sometimes friends take the place of our family. If you don't have a family, then your friends obviously take that place where you are close-knit to some of your friends. But if you have family, you need to be thankful for them. Now, you disagreed when you was growing up. You all was different one from another. You had your tangles and fights or whatever you may have had. But family is one of the greatest things that you can have. Especially when we talk about the family of God where Christians come in to, to take the role of, of a father or mother or a brother or sister and all that we begin to see. So what you need to be thankful for is you need to, you need to stop and say, God, I know my brother is, is so hard-headed. I wish he was just like me. Or God, you know, we got to start thanking God for family and friends. Now, I'm talking about the friends that will honestly tell you you're doing wrong. That's a friend. Not somebody that's a yes person that always agrees with everything you ask. They never go against what you say. I want somebody like family who will say, that's not right. And then when we go into the concept of realizing what scriptures is talking about, what we have to be thankful for is we have the things that all things that happen to you, you need to stop and be thankful for. And that's where it becomes difficult because it is easy to stop and say, thank you, God, when everything's going good. But what about in the, the most miserable time of your life? Do you pause and say, thank you, Lord? And you say, there's nothing to be thankful for, but yes, there is because God's working even when we don't see God working. Amen? So he, He's back here working. I may not see it. I may not feel it. But I know He is because of who He is. He cares for His children. And so the concept is, is that we are to be thankful for all things that happen to you. We need to start thanking Him more even when things go wrong. What a joy when we start doing that. We can go in the area, I want to take you back to the Old Testament passage that was up there just a few moments ago. 
in 1 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, I want to take you back there because these next couple things and the next point is drawn from it. Because uh, in Chronicles chapter 16, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, we began to see, beginning with verse 7, this is on the, that day that David delivered his first psalm to thank the Lord into the hands of Asaph and his brethren. So David composed this song, he shares this song, and then he puts it so it can be placed so we would have it to read and, and to uh, have it to, to reflect upon. And so as he does that, he begins to talk about things that we, as individuals, we need to be thankful for. And what he is doing here in the next couple of verses, and keep your place here, we're going to get to them in just a moment. But what he is doing is, what you have to be thankful for is we, through the New Testament, every one of us knows that we have what Christ did for us to be thankful for. Now, you may not accept it, but here, here's the fact. That what Christ did for others, He did for all. And so when we look at this, we realize what Christ did for us. He did what we couldn't do. We cannot obtain salvation by ourselves. It takes the blood of Christ, the shed blood of Christ, the remission of the sins of our life that Jesus shed and he, and he died on the cross. Cruel death. And people, I'm thankful he died for me. But he didn't die for me alone. He died for all people. And he did that that we could not do that is defeat satan in his control number five under what do we have to be thankful for people we just we ought to be so thankful for the lord you say well why should i be thankful for the lord because i've read the book of genesis and if it wasn't for the lord none of this would be here. Thank you, God, for creating this beautiful world that sometimes loses its ways. And we pray that we'll turn back to your ways. So the Lord is, is that. So let's go into the, the next aspect, and we're dealing with 1 Corinthians. Uh, how does a thankful person react? If you are thankful, how should you respond? How should you react in the area? I think we ought to have the enthusiasm as the young people, the children have. They're just ready to blurt out the answers and excited that they get the right answers. And they're not even worried if they get the wrong answers. They have that sense of, I want to express, and that is it. How does a thankful person react? Is they act in genuine appreciation. Genuine appreciation. Now, what do I mean by that? When you realize what God has done, let's go back to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Let's begin there at verse 8. Verse 8 says this to us. It says, give thanks unto the Lord. That's the first thing that David is writing to us. He says, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. Now this is genuine appreciation. Because if you're thankful for what somebody has done for you, you go back to that person, you share with that person, and you begin to, to just respond in such a joyous occasion. When somebody does something unexpected for you, do you appreciate it? Well, I deserve it. It's about time they did that for me. It ought to be that we just, with genuine appreciation. In my lifetime, I've had individuals who've done something that just overwhelmed me. And I called and tried to express that, and I cannot do it without some form of emotion. 
because of the genuine appreciation for what was done. I think there needs to be genuine appreciation. That is what the one leper who was healed came back. And I see him just, I see him embracing Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you for who you are and what you have done. And so David is writing this. He says, we need to give thanks unto the Lord. We need to call upon His name. We need to make known His deeds among the people. Verse 9, he goes on in this aspect. He says that we need to sing unto Him. I need an amen. And what do we sing? We need to sing psalms unto Him. We need to talk ye of all His wondrous works. <laughs> Genuine appreciation. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Secondly, how does a thankful person react? Is they react through the area of a changed outlook on life. You, you know, with, before Jesus, I was this way. After I met Jesus, after Jesus came into my life, I changed and I have a different outlook upon life. It is completely different from what I once was. I once was involved in worldly things, but now I'm involved in Christly things. So the, the, the change on the outlook of life, look at verse 10. He says, glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. That is a changed outlook. I mean, something happens. The inward man is changed. People listen to me. It saddens God. It saddens the church. It saddens us when Christians are so miserable and unthankful. We ought to be telling everybody how happy we are, what Christ has done for us, because we know Christ did it for us. He can do it for others. And that is the, what the, the psalmist is writing and what he's proclaiming here, that this needs to take place in the life of other individuals. It says in verse 11, and this is the area where uh, number three, how does a thankful person react? Is there's love towards the giver and for others. Love, love for the giver and love for other individuals. This is what we see in verse 11. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. That is, we have that, that relationship with the Lord. And not only if you go on and continue to read some of these verses here, you'll realize that what God has done for us, He's wanting us to proclaim it. You go back up, you see that, and He begins to establish that, that we are to talk of all His wondrous works. Where are you to talk about them? Everywhere you go. Jesus is wonderful. But somehow we've lost that desire and that relationship with Him. But when you are thankful for what Christ has done, you have love towards the giver and towards others. Do you know why? God gives to us, people listen to me, because often we get this wrong. People often think, well, God gives to me just for me to use. No. God gives to us to share, to give to others. If God pours out His blessings upon you, you are to pour out your blessings upon others. You get the picture? Love towards the giver and others. How does a thankful person react? They do things for God by doing things for others. And I could ask at this point, do you love God? You say, well, yeah, sure I love God. Well, let me ask you, how loving are you towards others? And I can change it, all others. 
Well, I only love those who love me. No, 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 no. That's not. God poured out his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's what I'm talking about. A thankful person reacts by loving God and loving others. And the truth is, if you're not loving others, you really don't love God. There's an old song that we sing. And the words express things that we ought to be thankful for. It was a short song that was taught many years ago. Some of you may have never heard of it. But it's just very simply because it says these words. Thank, I almost started singing it. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me Thy great salvation, so rich and free. You all remember that? Very few. Some of you say yes, and some of you say, I think so. But yes, it's something that we sing and need to sing more often. Thank you, Lord. I hear the humming of the tune. But how true it is. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you for making me whole. Thank you for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. People, listen, when you have Jesus, you have a lot to be thankful for. Are you thankful for what Christ has done for you? That's the last thought. But yet that last statement, are you thankful for what Christ has done for you, is not the last statement that we ought to look at, but it ought to be something that we just really sincerely look at within ourselves. Are you thankful for what Christ has done for you? And here's the good news. He can change you from a miserable person to a thankful person. Amen? Amen. Let's go to God in prayer.